Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The following file is a digitized copy of an American Secure Containment Initiative file that has been preserved for posterity. Please consult your local HCML supervisor before acting on any information in this file. Maria Jones, Director, RAISA. Item number 6789-AH. Object class humanoid ontokinetic, possibly. Threat level. No threat currently. ASCI protocols for containment. A bounty of 10,000 francs have been placed on 6789-AH's head, with an additional 100 francs for each of its crew members. As political complications resulting from Emperor Napoleon's military campaigns have prevented the Estate Noir from supporting the ASCII, business in the State of France concerning 6789-AH should be conducted through intermediaries. Description. Item 6789-AH is the French Captain Francois Aranodo, captain of the Duc de Danzig. The item is believed to be a preternatural being of some renown, though a full description of its abilities is unconfirmed. What has been observed is that 6789-AH is able to physically control the paths of other ships within eyesight, manipulating their sails and riggings any way it pleases. 6789-AH has used its ability to run vessels and their crews aground, or dash them against rocks and collect whatever of value remained. As a result of these abilities, 6789-AH was able to become a highly successful privateer in service to France capturing over 30 military and merchant ships in under 10 years. Apprehension of the item while at sea is highly inadvisable. Officers should wait until item 6789-AH has disembarked and sink Duke de Zanzig as soon as possible to cut off a means of escape. 1412-1812 In December of 1812, a report was published in a local French newspaper of a naval ship's encounter with the Duke de Zanzig. Due to the Second War of Independence, a full examination and review of the event was not possible. We had spotted the vessel floating at sea late last night, floating on the wave with seemingly no direction. The decision was made to contact the crew. If they were good and courteous Frenchmen, we would assist them in whatever distress they had found themselves in. If they were brigands, we would assist their distress. As we drew closer. We were perplexed at the silence of which the ship stood. There were no signs of a recent skirmish, or the impact of a storm. It was in perfect condition. A boarding party came up beside it, and I was first among them. We found an ungodly amount of blood staining the deck. It appeared that the whole crew, at least fifty men strong, had been slaughtered. Men were hanging off the ropes like criminals. Others laid on the ground with their entrails thrown astride and many had simply had their faces caved in with cannonballs fired from their own cannons. One man, dressed in the finery of a captain, and with the putrid stench of a corpse, had been lashed to the main mast, swords piercing his hands and feet like a ghastly crucifixion. Bloody papers in the hold identified the ship as the Duke de Danzig, a privateering ship of some small fame. It had gone missing some time ago and resurfaced here. What had happened? Had the crew gone mad, overthrown the captain? But why would they destroy themselves in such a manner? Francois made the decision to burn the ship, one I agreed heartily with. Whatever evil occurred there, it was best to leave it. Based on the details of the scene above, it is the opinion of ASCII Command that a mutiny occurred against Item 6789-AH, in which it was slain but not before it used its anomalous abilities to enact the deaths of its crew. The possibility of other members of the Duke de Danzig having had similar powers has not been ruled out. With the death of Item 6789-AH, the mission has been closed. Item number SCP-5987 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures A 3km radius around SCP-5987's manifestation area has been blocked off from all sea and air traffic. Foundation vehicles should not go within 2km of SCP-5987. 
SCP-5987 is a Type 4-H apparition, centralized to a small area in Arcachon Bay, off the southwest coast of France. Between the time of nautical twilight on the evening of one day and nautical twilight on the following day, a 19th century brig will appear, sailing around the bay before vanishing. SCP-5987 has been observed to always stay within a kilometer of its manifestation point. All vehicles that approach SCP-5987, hereby referred to as SCP-5987-1 instances, will be unable to be controlled by their operators. Wheels, pedals, and other methods of directional movement will still function, but will not produce their desired results. SCP-5987-1 instances will then immediately dive underwater, typically killing all passengers aboard. An annual analysis of predecessor files in 2017 revealed that the ASCII had documented an anomaly similar to SCP-5987, centered around a vessel 200 years earlier that was believed to be neutralized when Item 6789-AH, the Captain Francois Aranoto, was killed at sea as part of a suspected mutiny. Due to an increasing risk of sightings by civilians, current containment efforts are being redirected toward neutralization of SCP-5987. A mission was approved to search the manifestation area for any signs of spectral significance. Video Log Date, January 7, 2019 Vessel SCPS Submersible Nephthys Begin Log 2300 SCPS Nephthys approaches the radius of SCP-5987's area of effect. 2305 SCP-5987 turns towards the submarine. Command loses communication with Nephthys as it submerges. 2305-2316 Command attempts to re-establish contact with the submersible. 2316 Communication is re-established. Captain Dumer reports that the submersible experienced heavy but not essential damage from colliding with the ocean floor. However, anomalous influence of Nephthys has ceased. Dumer requests an update on its current objective. 2316-2334 The liberations are held between the members of the research team. Some wish to take the opportunity to investigate SCP-5987 more closely, while others insist on relying on the original mission parameters. 2334 The liberation ceases when SCP-5987 is observed retreating to a further distance. A white flag is raised from its mainmast. 2337 Taking it as a sign of approval, Nephthys is cleared to proceed on its original parameters. 2345 Nephthys reaches the approximate manifestation point. Numerous wooden and steel shipwrecks can be seen dotting the sea floor. Nephthys switches to search mode. 218 Nephthys pauses by a small wooden shipwreck, ready in the dive team. At sea level, SCP-5987 lowers its flag to half-mast before raising it to full again. 219 This information is relayed to Dumer, and the divers are deployed to clear access to the wreckage. 225 Several skeletons are found, all with various levels of saltwater corrosion. 230 Agent LaCroix finds a large ornate figurehead carved to resemble a siren or mermaid, buried underneath a large section of the hull. Notably, the figurehead lacked any damage. 235. A loud bell chime is heard as the divers depart, and SCP-5987 vanishes prematurely. The mission is declared over, and Nephthys returns to the surface. End log. At nautical twilight the next day, SCP-5987 did not appear and was considered neutralized. The figurehead has been designated SCP-5987-1 pending further examination. Item number 5987, Level 1 Unrestricted, Containment Class Euclid, Disruption Class Dark, Risk Class Notice, Special Containment Procedures SCP-5987 has been treated for saltwater protection and fitted to a historically accurate miniature 19th century sailing ship, which has been placed in the saltwater enclosure at Area 34's Marine Observatory. 
SCP-5987 should be examined once a month for any signs of damage. SCP-5987 is the former figurehead of the Duc de Danzig, a French privateer rig from the early 19th century. However, analysis of the composition has revealed that SCP-5987 was made approximately 200 years prior and was most likely added after construction of the brig. SCP-5987 is able to control all seafaring vessels within a kilometer of its vicinity. In the past, its ability was used to sink rival ships or run them aground for looting. It appeared to resent this task, however, and ended up killing its captain, Francois Arenaudo, and his crew in 1811. After it was burned at sea by a French naval ship, the manner of its death was strong enough to create a spectral disturbance tied to its location. Currently, SCP-5987 uses its ability to sail around its enclosure. Personnel in close vicinity report hearing an unknown chorus of voices, singing the French sea shanty, Boney was a warrior.